what did I say? <laughs> My husband and I divorced over religious differences. He thought he was God, and I didn't. <laughs> 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 yeah, that one quick, didn't I? <laughs> I used to have a handle on life, but it broke. <laughs> <laughs> You're just jealous because the voices only talk to me. <laughs> you must talk to everybody. <laughs> I'm not a complete idiot. Some parts are missing. <laughs> Consciousness. That annoying time between naps. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Ever stop to think and forget to start again? <laughs> okay. Being over the hill is much better than being under it. Wrinkle <laughs> was not one of the things I wanted to be when I grew up. There you go. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a cash advance. <laughs> Stupidity is not a handicap. Park elsewhere. <laughs> he who dies with the most toys is nonetheless dead. <laughs> Open your Bibles. <laughs> We're going to turn to Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Somebody already got it already. Somebody knows that scripture. I'm going to start reading in verse 1. <clears throat> now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Amen. Blessed shall, you, shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Yeah. Blessed shall, you be, shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one, one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I want to go too far, I want us to back up to verse 8. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand to do. <coughs> Leviticus 25 verse 21 also says that I will command my blessing on you. We're a blessed people. Yeah. Scripture says we're a holy nation of royal priesthood. I'll tell people that they've got royal blood in them, and they'll say, I don't feel like it. <coughs> I'll tell people that they're blessed, and again they'll say, I don't feel like it. I tell people, God will bless what you <laughs> set your hands to do. And the response oftentimes that I get is, then why isn't he blessing me? I don't feel blessed. You say I'll be blessed, and 
My bank account is in the minus. Mm. I'm behind on my rents. I'm behind on my car payments. In fact, my car just broke down and I don't have the money to fix it. <laughs> and you want to tell me, am I hitting somebody here? You want to tell me that I'm blessed? Yes, you are. I've shared this before, but some of you may not have heard it, so here goes again. If you have food in the fridge, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of the world. If you have money in the bank and your wallet has some spare change, you are among the top 8% wealthy of the world. Wow. That's good. Wow. If you woke up this morning, hope all of you woke up this morning, you are more blessed than the million people who won't survive this week. If you have never experienced the danger of battle, the agony of imprisonment or torture, or the horrible pangs of starvation. You are in luck, or you are luckier than 500 million people living and suffering today. If you can read this message, and are more fortunate, you are more fortunate than 3 billion people in the world today <coughs> who cannot read it all. You're blessed. I'm blessed. You've heard me tell you before that I'm selfish. Because I want everything God has for me. Me too. I'm selfish. And I don't want to hear an amen at all end of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm selfish because I want everything God has for me, including all the promises yeah, in His Word. Especially them. Everything that He's promised me in the Bible, I want. Have you ever read a promise in the Bible and wondered how could it ever come to pass in your life? Have you ever read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, the second portion of that verse is, by whose stripes you were healed, and you're sitting here in constant pain, you're hurting, and wondering. The scripture says I'm healed, but it just doesn't feel like it. And also in Isaiah 53, verse 5, and by his stripes we are healed, the doctor tells you that there's no hope. Who are you going to believe You were healed. By his stripes, you were healed. He paid the price for our healing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And Isaiah 53 he says, We are healed because that's an ongoing work that he has provided for Amen. us. Amen. Before we go any further, I want you to know that I do believe in healing. I believe in divine healing. I'm not making fun of those scriptures. And I do believe in the promises that God has given us. And those are part of those promises. Sometimes those promises of God are seemingly impossible. Sometimes they seem that they're out of our reach. Sometimes it seems we will never see those promises that God has given us. We'll never see them fulfilled in our lives. So Craig, you say the healing sounds great. Our needs being met sounds great. So how do we get there from here? How do we get to that point from where we are today? And I don't care who you are, but everyone, and I'm sure somebody's going to disagree with me on this, but, but everyone who has ever lived by faith and has trusted in God's promises, has had that thought at one time or another, has wondered about those things at some time or another. Even Abraham, one of the greatest heroes 
of the faith. God presenting him with things that we would think are completely impossible. The first time Abraham heard God's promises, he had no idea how they would ever come to pass. And it's just like us. We have a promise, we open the word of God, and we read the promises that God has for us. We have no idea how they would ever come to pass in our life. We often wonder how that could even work. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. And this is God speaking to Abraham. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. You know, I think that first part of that verse is probably the toughest. I will make you a great nation. Mm -hmm. I can hear Abraham saying, but God, none of us ever go that direction, right? But God, <laughs> Sarah and I are too old to have kids. And you say we're going to be the father, we're going to be the parents of a great nation. You and I will also say at times, but God, I just don't see how that can ever happen in my life. We often try to figure out how God can ever do for us what he says he's going to do. Our minds just can't comprehend it. We can't comprehend what seems impossible. One pastor said, how do you get from being a childless old man with a barren old wife to being a great nation? You've given it away. <laughs> how do you ever get to that point? Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. Amen. Hallelujah. Just simply put, we don't understand, we can't begin to fathom. We don't think the same way God does. <laughs> I'm going to take a minute and ask you a couple of questions this morning. How do you put God's blessings into action in your life? And the blessings that God has given us in his word, how can we make them real in our life? I want to give you the simplest and most basic answer that I could ever begin to think to give. Put God first in everything you do. Put God first in everything you do. I had someone tell me this week when they had asked me that very question. But I don't think I can do that. So I want to lay out for you this morning some of God's principles for his blessings in your life. First of all, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 and 27, just the first half of 27. It says, Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord, your God. We must follow God's word. What God's word lays out for us, we need to follow that. We must obey his commands. And an individual tell me, I can't understand why God doesn't bless me. <laughs> You, you might be taken back by my response to him. My simple response was this. You need to 
quit selling drugs? <laughs> I'm just telling you the way it is. <laughs> the other person went out and said to another individual, you need to quit transporting drugs. <laughs> the individual who came to me, he had asked Jesus to come into his heart some few years back. But he's continued in his old ways, and he can't understand. He says, Greg, I just don't, can't figure out why God doesn't bless me. The Bible says that he's going to bless me. He said, yeah, but not in your illegal activities. As you honor God. Some of you know that's exactly how I'm going to talk to him. Put God first. One of the things, though, is many people will have asked Jesus to come into the heart, forgive them of their sins. God, just come and dwell with me. I love you. Make me a new creation. Forgive me of my sins. But the problem is, it stops right there. They go no further in their walk with God. If you want everything God has for you, you need to follow Him. Do what He wants you to do. When we serve God, we don't serve Him because we want to be blessed. We serve Him because we love Him. I want to save that for another message sometime. Second one. When God blesses you, your blessings should flow to others. You may have heard this phrase before. In fact, I've used this phrase before. You are blessed to bless. God blesses you so that you in turn can bless others. Again, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. So what are we supposed to do with this? Simply put, we need to be sensitive to the needs of others around us and reach out as God puts it on our hearts to do. Many of you here are sensitive in that way. I want to read a little story. There was a woman in church who had found herself as a single mother. She had little or no income and was finding a very difficult finding it very difficult to provide for her children. As a result of the low income, she could no longer afford the house she had been renting, so I had to move out of the house and into an apartment. Since the move was just across town, she saved time by packing what belongings she had into boxes and garbage bags. The next day after, after the move was completed and she had unpacked all of the boxes and bags, she realized that the garbage bag into which she had packed her and her children's shoes was missing. She drove back to the house she had been living in and asked the landlord if he had seen the bag of shoes. With a sincere apology, the landlord told her that he had seen the bag of shoes, but since it was left behind in a, in a garbage bag, he assumed it was trash and had already disposed of it. The woman was devastated. Her church shoes and the sh shoes she wore to her job were in there. Her children's school shoes and their church shoes were in there as well. Now, they were gone, and she could not afford the money to replace them. Someone at church heard about the situation, decided to get an answer to God, and answered somebody's prayer, and spent their own money to replace all the shoes the woman and her children had lost. That immediate crisis had been dealt with, and the woman's prayers had been answered. Somebody there was sensitive to the need that they saw around them and responded as God put it down their heart to do. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 4, the Message Bible says like this, Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. I'm going to repeat that. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. You can take that a number of different ways. 
But one of the ways I take it is, life is so busy. We get involved in doing so many things. We're going every different direction that can, is imaginable. And if somebody stops you and says, can you help me? And you, you know, you just keep running. It's hard to stop sometimes when you're always on the go. Genesis 12, 2, again, speaks of action. As we are blessed, we are to be a blessing to others. And I've said before, you may never know what's going on with the person that you're sitting next to. In the life that we live, we all face so many different situations. And you have to stop long enough to be sensitive to what God's speaking to your heart concerning that individual next to you. Once we can deal with the one next to us, then we can begin reaching out a little further and a little further and a little further. Someone said, but I can afford to help people. Nobody said it was about money. <clears throat> it might be. But it also might be speaking a word of encouragement to somebody. Maybe that simple word of encouragement is all that that individual needs to you needs. It might be mowing somebody's grass. It might just be giving somebody a ride to the grocery store. There's a lot of might be's. <coughs> it's us being sensitive to God's Spirit speaking to us <coughs> and reaching as He puts it on our heart to do. The next one is, when we bless others, God takes care of our needs. Luke chapter 18, verses 29 to 30 says, Assuredly I say to you, there is no one who has life, house, or parents, brothers, or wife, or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who shall not receive many times in this present time and in the age to come, which is eternal life. We can't outgive God. We can't. We can sure try. But we're not going to be able to outgive God. As God blesses you, take it and reach out. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 of the Message Bible says, Be generous. Invest in acts of charity. Charity yields high returns. When you reach out to other people, you are investing in their life. You're not investing in the stock market. You're investing in somebody's life. And I'm going to tell you something. It is way more rewarding to invest in people's lives than it has ever been to invest in the stock market. Look at Proverbs is full of a lot of wisdom. Chapter 11, verse 25, it says, The generous will be made rich, and he who waters will be watered. Verse 27, He who earnestly seeks good friends He who earnestly seeks finds good favor with friends. I'm misquoting that somehow. I wrote it just a little or gains favor. Verse 28. He who trusts in riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish. The last principle of God's blessings that I'm going to touch on this morning is this. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 18. Keep my decrees and observe my laws. 
What God tells you to do, we need to do. As with anything good, you know as well as I do, it takes work. It takes work. In Deuteronomy, it tells of Israel going in to possess the land that God had given them. God had promised them what we call today the promised land. But what they had to do, they had to go in and possess it. They had to go in and take it. So when you are doing, one of the principles it takes is doing something to make it happen. So if we want the blessings God has promised us, it's going to take work. Work that you don't get paid for. Monetarily. But it's so much rewarding. Yeah. So much more rewarding. As God gives, we give, and God will bless you. The Israelites had to go in. They had to do battle. They had to fight. They had victories that they needed to win. But they did it. So my question back to you this morning is, what do you want from God? And how much do you want from God? I want to encourage you to go in And receive everything God has for you. All of the promises that He has given us in this, in this Bible, they're for us. Mm -hmm. We need to receive them. He wants to give them, we need to take them. And then the next question is this Do you just want the basics? Or do you want all God has for you? You want to join me in being selfish? <laughs> or you want to just have the basics? <clears throat> I want to close with this scripture, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. You're going to recognize it right off the bat as soon as I start reading it. <laughs> Give, and it shall be given you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Now I want to remind you one thing here. We don't give because we want something back. We give because we want to please God. We want to follow His statutes. We want to follow His commands. We want to do what He wants us to do. But then we are promised that He will bless us back, press down, shake it together, and running over. Hallelujah. 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 You need a blessing in your life? You need something from God this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Invest in His kingdom, and you're going to be blessed. Would you stand with us?